Hi, welcome to episode 31 of the Gentle Knitter podcast. My name is Nicole and I'm coming to you from Ottawa, Ontario. Today is Sunday, February 2nd, and uh, I'm so glad to be able to join you today. It's been a very strange couple of weeks. Um, I have been having some health issues, <laughs> some new health issues, um, and it has meant that I have had very little sleep in the last couple of months. Um, basically what's going on is I have a benign tumor on my thyroid, and you may be able to see, actually I think you can see it really well, I've got a big bump here, and it's not on that side. Basically, they biopsied it and it is totally not cancerous. Um, it is just a benign growth that they have to address because the growth itself is causing my thyroid to overact, overreact or overproduce a thyroid hormone, which means that I am having a lot of problems sleeping. I feel really jittery all the time, almost as if I'd had too much coffee. Um, and I've kind of got the shakes and just, you know, not feeling, not feeling well at all. And so in uh, about a week and a half, I'm going to be getting a, a really scary sounding treatment, but it's actually not that bad. It, um, they will be giving me radioactive iodine. And, uh, so this treatment, basically your thyroid is the only thing that absorbs iodine in your body. So all the radioactivity will go to my thyroid and that will um, destroy the uh, the tumor. So that, that's the hope. And um, so once I get the radioactive iodine, they give it to me at the hospital, I have to be in quarantine for a couple of weeks because I will be radioactive. So, um, so that'll be interesting. It'll be hard to be away from Mark and Marcel. Uh, but I plan, I will be able to work and uh, so I'm just going to camp out in our guest bedroom and just make sure I have lots of knitting and books and uh, I will be able to go outside. I can, you know, I can go out in the world, just not hang out with people. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Um, I'm really glad that I will be getting the treatment because um, it's going to probably, the symptoms are gonna get worse before it gets better. So um, I'm hoping that, you know, if I get it done now, February, and it takes two to three months to kind of sort itself out, I should be feeling a lot better for the spring, which means that I can start you know, playing outside again. I've, I've been so tired that I haven't, I've barely gone skiing. It's just been a dud of a winter. So anyway, that's kind of what's going on with me. Um, my hope is that I will be up and back to my usual outdoorsy self uh, in time for the summer because I will be going back to Bradford camps uh, to uh, Sarah Hunt of Fibertrex uh, Wool Scouts uh, retreat. And I will be teaching again. I'm super excited. Uh, so I will be there with uh, Sophia Cameborn of the Cabin Warnia podcast. And of course, Sarah will be there. She'll be teaching also. And uh, another instructor, another Sarah, will be there teaching basketry and embroidery and all kinds of different handcrafts. So I am, I'm really, really excited. The, uh, the inscriptions or the, uh, you can, you can, all the information is out on Sarah's website at Fibertrack and I will put the, uh, the, the link here, but, um, I encourage you if you love, uh, being in the most pristine woodland, uh, heavenly place with, incredible food and really wonderful people. Uh, I think you might really, really enjoy this uh, retreat. It is very relaxed. Um, and like I said, the accommodations are amazing. The food is incredible. Uh, the people at Bradford Camps um, just treat us like we are royalty. 
<laughs> so that's really nice. And just the just the whole vibe of the retreat is so wonderful. Sarah is an incredible hostess and um, she has all kinds of goodies planned for all the, uh, the different uh, wool scouters. So um, if you're interested, please check it out. It, um, it runs from, I believe it's August 8th to the 18th or something like that. Um, the dates, putting the dates right here, but, uh, there's two sessions. So, um, so yeah, I encourage you highly to check it out. I will be teaching, uh, I will be sort of riffing on my woodland ornaments that I developed last year. I'm slowly gathering up uh, stuff for a possible book that I may publish, self-publish with my, uh, with my mushroom patterns. Um, anyway, there's stuff in the works, uh, regarding that. So, um, so we'll, <laughs> I'll tell you more about it later, but, uh, but anyway, I will be, uh, teaching how to make your own, um, uh, woodland ornaments and, uh, sort of the technique is, is all about improvising and about, um, learning all kinds of different shaping that so that you can make your own uh, so that you don't have to follow a specific pattern although I will have uh, specific patterns too um, yeah so anyway I like I said I encourage you to check out Sarah's information on her website if you're interested in joining us at Bradford's <music> So because of my um, semi-zombie state from my thyroid problem, uh, I ended up doing a lot of knitting in the last couple of months. Um, and I finished something that has been in my whips basket forever. And my husband has been very, very patiently awaiting this. Uh, so I'm very happy to say that I finished Mark's sweater. It is the Tamarack Cardigan by Jared Flood. And um, it is originally, it was designed for Quarry, but I actually knit it in, um, in Galway Heathers. And I, it's a worsted weight yarn and I held it double. And it is in this really beautiful... Uh, kind of forest green that's probably that's a really good representation of the color um, yeah it's it's squishy and really heathery and lovely so this is definitely going to keep Mark warm over the next couple of months before we get back into more summery weather. But um, yeah, I didn't make any modifications. The only difference is that I didn't put in the pockets. Mark didn't want pockets, so I just knit the body plain, but it fits him great. And it was a very kind of laborious um, knit because it is done in like double moss stitch so basically it, every stitch is knit and purl knit and purl and uh that just is so slow especially with bulky yarn I just I find that I'm not very fast when I knit with bulky yarn and then to have um to switch from knit to purl on top of that 
and also managing uh, two strands of yarn and all that. I can't say that I loved working on this, <laughs> which is probably why it took so long to, uh, to get going. I had started another pattern. I think the last time I talked about this project, I was, I had started on another pattern. It didn't work out. So I ended up going with with the uh, tamarack and very very happy with it it fits great so yay for that um i made a few things for myself to keep me warm the the year um the winter has been kind of up and down like it's been we've had some super super cold uh periods and then really mild periods but for those cold periods i knit myself uh, a sweet hat. Um, I kind of improvised the uh, the pattern. Uh, I just basically, you know, a two by two rib and then the uh, body of the hat is kind of a, a mix of garter and uh, knit stitches. And the yarn I used is uh, some actually <laughs> some mystery yarn from my stash. The it was a worsted weight strand of um probably some superwash uh merino hand dyed with kind of speckles but all these very pretty kind of neutrally uh speckles like um there's like dark charcoal and blues and a few like little blips of of red and orange um and brown, lots of brown. And then I held it double with some mohair, uh, some old kids kid silk haze that I had in my stash. But uh, I just made this like super, super slouchy, kind of warm uh, beanie type of hat. And I really love it. I'm sorry if I'm kind of darting my eyes back and forth. I am recording with my phone again, based on your feedback in the last episode. Um, you said that the sound and image quality was really good, and I, I thought so too. Uh, the only thing is the sort of the camera is, I have to look over there, but the image is over here. And so when I look at myself directly <laughs> on the screen, my eyes go that way. I'm not sure how that works but anyway I'll do my best to look over there but um yeah it's super pretty I love it it's very soft incredibly warm so the hat kind of put me in this uh, mohair mood I think a lot of people are in that mood it's been quite cold here um this winter and so I was watching Espace Tricot and Melissa had knit a dotted rays shawl by Stephen West and she had used their um, Espace Tricot's line of yarn I believe it's called Grace in this really beautiful kind of dusty pink color she had held it double with a mohair and uh, I just suddenly absolutely as you do needed to cast that on for myself I didn't want to I would have loved to have bought the Espace Tricot yarn and, and make an exact copy of uh, Melissa's shawl but um, instead I was good and I went stash diving and basically uh, did a fade it's a very very subtle fade you can kind of see here that it goes from a sort of a grayish blue to a, a clear and kind of colder um, creamy gray. And um, it's it's a really beautiful pattern. It's got uh, I-cord edging on, um, on all the edges. So you end up with a really lovely finished edge. And um, the yarns I use, so uh, I use some Viola yarns, her Alpaca Polworth uh, in this beautiful blue gray. And then I use some of her sock yarn in the color Explosion. 
I used um, Urso Yarn Company's Petite Fesse Bleu, which is a blue face luster uh, blend in the sage colorway. And then the last section was done in um, Dragonfly Fibers, I believe, old old stash stuff. Um, I held it with mohair um, from Bleu Poussière that I bought last year, or no, the year before at Twist. Uh, Bleu Poussière is a natural, uh, natural dyes yarn company in Quebec and uh, Shani does beautiful work. I highly recommend you check out her web shop. But um, the yarn was dyed, I believe, in mushroom. Yeah, it says it's a polyphore, a polyphore à odeur de banjoin, which, um, so it's a type of mushroom in the color Ellesmere. So, yeah, so I'm super, super happy with the results. It is absolutely delicious to wear, of course. Um, it is just so, so cozy. And I love how subtle and, you know, pretty the fade is. Um, it is so warm. Um, just, yeah, it's just a delight to wear. And I love putting it on sort of over my winter coat and just go outside and feel like I'm getting a beautiful mohair hug. So works in progress um, in my sweet buku bag. I've got a pair of mittens, I'm still working on the second one, but I have finished the first one. Um, it is called the Morana Mittens. Let me put, put the finished one on for you. Um, a really beautiful pattern with, with kind of a leafy cable on the front. Um, I knit it in uh, Letlopi in this gorgeous kind of goldeny brass color. And uh, the Marana Mittens is uh, designed by Irina Anakiva. And if you look at the pattern, um, I had to modify a little bit because I have really long fingers and uh, the pattern probably as written would stop like here, <laughs> but my fingers <laughs> go on for a couple of inches. So, um, so yeah, so I had to lengthen the hand quite a bit. And if I were to knit them again, I think what I would do is either start this uh, a bit higher uh, just extend the little the little branch here or uh, alternately I could add one repeat of these double leaves like here and then have that middle one at the top but honestly I wanted to just keep going even though um, I would prefer it the other way I just I didn't want to rip them out and I mean the design is right on the hand and I do, uh, I do still really like them that way. And I love, I love this color. I love uh, Lopi Mittens. I have another pair of Lopi Mittens that, um, that I made a couple of winters ago and I wear them a lot and they, they wear really well and they're super, super warm. So, so yay for that. I really am enjoying that and I'm, I'm almost done. I've got maybe half an inch left to before I do the decreases. Um, knitting them on four millimeter DPNs and super quick, quick and easy knit. My last work in progress, uh, features yarn I've talked about before several times. It's yarn from Sockill Farms. Um, They're variegated DK in the red, uh, Rhode Island red. Uh, really pretty yarn that actually feels a lot like Lopi, um, but it's not. And it's a DK, so it's very much like uh, if you had a DK weight let Lopi, this is pretty much what this this um, yarn is. And um, I had originally cast on a um, Widow's Kiss, which is a beautiful cable pullover by Thea Coleman, and got about two-thirds of the way up the body and just decided that 
that's not what this yarn wanted to be. Uh, what I really wanted was a very simple uh, cardigan that I could wear over dresses. So um, I talked about it last time. I was going to knit the uh, PZ cardigan by Heidi Kiermeyer and got about a third of the way. Uh, it's a top down, so I kind of had more or less the yoke done. And I don't know, I wasn't feeling it. So I ripped that out, started to think that maybe this yarn was uh, cursed, <laughs> but um, I think I found the right pattern for it. So now I am knitting the Scolay, the Scolay cardigan by Carrie Westerman. And it is, uh, it's a cardigan that I've had my eye on for a while. And the reason why I really love it is because it reminds me so much of this cardigan. And I wear this one so much that, um, I, I don't know, I just felt like that's going to be, that's going to be a winner. So, um, here's where I'm at. I've got just the bottom. It is a bottom up, um, and so the entire body, you can knit it, um, you can steek it or knit it back and forth. And uh, I don't know why I just, I thought, oh, I just feel like doing back and forth. So, uh, so that's what I'm doing. And uh, it's got a little bit of lace at the bottom. And then, uh, then the, the whole yoke is kind of this textured uh, mix of uh, cables and lace. So, yeah, so very, very simple. Uh, right now it's just uh, miles and miles of stockinette, which I love. And uh, we'll be doing that, you know, for most of the body. I'm the, the sweater does have kind of uh, waist shaping. I'm not doing that. I um, I'm doing what I always do, which is cast on a slightly larger size uh, than what my bust is. And then just gradually make my decreases to a smaller size for the top. So I'm knitting a large bottom and I'll probably end up with a medium top. So I'll just gradually uh, decrease those to get an A-line. So yeah, so that's what I'm working on. And I uh, really love the, that color. I think it'll look so beautiful with uh, so many of my uh, dresses. I've got lots of kind of navy and charcoal gray and black and I think this color goes really really well with all that. So yeah, so looking forward to uh, working more on that. And I think that is it for me. I, um, like I said, will be having a bit of a quiet couple of weeks coming up. But, um, you know, I, I very much look forward to uh, getting back to a healthier place. It's been, you know, a couple of years of not feeling well that, you know, with the thyroid and, uh, you know, some uh, depression and some anxiety and, and being diagnosed pre-diabetic and all that, It's it's been kind of a bit of a struggle health wise these last uh this last little while so I am very much looking forward to kind of addressing those issues and uh, and getting back to a healthier place but it's not something that is an overnight process that's going to take a while and in the meantime I'm so grateful that I have uh knitting to keep me company and to make me feel better. So anyway, wherever you are, I hope that you are, um, you have a lot of delicious knitting, keeping you company and making you feel better. And uh, I look forward to talking with you again in a little bit. So anyway, thank you. Um, be well. Bye.